This is the ACC on ESPN. Glad you're with us from Clemson Memorial Stadium where the home team has won 13 straight. This is the 110th meeting of a heated rivalry between number 12 South Carolina and number 11 Clemson. Joe Tessitore and Matt Millen here in Clemson, South Carolina. South Carolina unable to take advantage of good field position early. Just before kickoff, we got the breaking news on the injury front from South Carolina that Connor Shaw, the starting quarterback for South Carolina, would be a no-go to start the game. We may see him. He's been dealing with a sprained left foot. Dylan Thompson getting the start. What do you make of Thompson and what he does, the impact that could have on this offense? I think the biggest thing is for him is to just settle down. He's got to settle down and let the guys around him do their job. And Ellington carries it out to the 24. Of course, Taj Boyd on the other side. No worries at quarterback for Clemson. He has been playing outstanding football lately. Second in the nation in passing efficiency coming off that touchdown game against NC State. On the direct snap out to the 30-yard line. Yes, we've talked about Taj Boyd, and certainly he understands this offense, knows the playmakers around him, and that's the key because they have a lot of them. Andre Hopkins on the outside. Andre Ellington, who just saw number 23. Brandon Ford, number 80 on the outside. Plus Taj Boyd, Sammy Watkins with great speed. They have a ton of playmakers. Pressure up the middle as Boyd quickly gets it out that time to Brandon Ford. Outstanding tight end for Clemson, who has eight touchdowns on the year. That is a good sign for Clemson. They brought a blitz. That offensive line is able to pick up the, all the pressure and allow Boyd to be able to make the throw. This game, this team will go as far as Boyd can go, and Boyd will go as far as this offensive line can protect him. Third down and one. One of the guys you saw right in the middle of that thing is Jadavian Clowney, that right defensive end. And boy, he's, he's fun to watch, and it's fun to see his progression. And I've talked to a couple of pro scouts who said they think that he might be the best defensive player that they've watched, and he's only a sophomore. Didn't he, play last week. Was bothered by a leg issue. He's out there giving it a go, and his boy ends up finding him. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to put it. Scrambling around, Jerido the first to get after him, and then met by Jadavian Clowney. Yeah. Clowney was, was blocked initially. You see him, he's right up top here. And then, like you said, Taj Boyd, he's trying to get out of the thing, and he, he, he runs right into Mr. Clowney. Jadavian Clowney is a fun player to watch. You still, he still needs to develop. He still needs to get bigger and stronger, but he's got all the requisite athleticism. Second and 15. Boy, downfield a little too high. And upended was DeAndre Hopkins. Let's go down to the field, check in with Shannon Spade. Shannon? Well, Joe, you mentioned those injuries on Jadavian Clowney. A left knee, right foot, something that he's been battling the last couple weeks. Actually sat out last weekend's game against Wofford. He had an MRI on that knee earlier this week. Coach Breyer told me before the game that he's 100%. He was great in practice, and he's looking to him to be a huge impact player tonight. And he's made for down and distance like this, third and 15. and they're able to find the middle of that zone. Wildcat formation again. Ellington good blocks in front as Ellington gets it 
to the 43-yard line. Let's look at the impact players for Clemson brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Well, we said they have a lot of speed on the outside. Watkins, Hopkins, Ellington, all these guys are blessed with great speed, playmaking ability. If you get any of these guys in space, they are going to make you pay for it. They can all fly, and they all can make you miss. Second and six. And Ellington is taken down. Just a gain of a yard that time, and big six foot eight. Devin Taylor was able to find him. Taylor's on the other side, the bookends of this South Carolina defense. Clowney, a lot of teams will slide to Clowney and keep a guy in. And Taylor on the other side, he can bring a little bit of heat himself. We've been fortunate this year to watch a lot of excellent college quarterbacks. And I got to tell you, the guys that we've watched, we've watched a bunch of them. This Taj Boy might be the best we've watched all season long. He can beat you with his feet. He can beat you with his arm. He's got excellent mechanics. He's got a nice, strong arm, can make all the throws. It's a good player. He's really matured this year. We've heard a lot about that from his coaches. Spins free and then completes it to Sammy Watkins. Great example of everything Taj Boy can do all on one play. That's, that is, that's just a great example of all the things we're talking about. And if he can do that, you're going to see this. We've talked about the offensive line. They will dictate what, what Boyd can do. The playmakers, all we've talked about them, they've got to be able to show up. And then they've got to make Dylan Thompson beat them. Make it one dimensional. Here's McDowell now. And he goes for eight yards as Clemson is moving the ball well early here against South Carolina. The knock on Clemson is they haven't really played any one test. They haven't really been tested. Yes, they have all these skill people, but can they do it against a formidable opponent? And here come the Gamecocks in. And these guys look just fine. Spins at the line of scrimmage and inside the 10 where will be first and goal, Tigers. Tess, this is that offensive line. It's been an underrated group, but I got to tell you, they've been playing extremely well. You got Gifford Tiff, Timothy on the outside, Shatley on the inside, Dalton Freeman in the center. That's a really nice job of just getting on people, and these skilled people can take care of the rest. Down to the two-yard line. Whenever you watch Andre Ellington, sometimes it looks like he's going faster than everybody else. And that's mostly because he is. This kid can flat-out fly. Watkins is another one. Same thing. Great quickness, great vision, nice feet in the hole. 15th play of the drive here. Ellington on second and goal get free that time a wall of defenders led by Demario Jeffrey this is the last really the last place in football where you test all your good fundamentals and that's goal line and short yardage no man wins you got to come off with force both offensively and defensively in those lines to start the scoring night for Clemson. When you run your quarterback, you gain an extra man offensively because defensively, you don't account for him. Touchdown of the year for Taj Boyd as they strike first in this rivalry.
coverage is being provided by MetLife. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. Moments ago, it was what Taj Boyd was able to do. Three-yard touchdown run for Clemson. A 16-play drive that ties a season high for plays on a scoring drive for the Tigers this year. Bruce Ellington back to return. Spencer Benton kickoff. as Ellington catches a seam on the sideline and stiff arms his way out past the 35-yard line tackled by Xavier Brewer. We'll take a quick break. Punks it up 7-0. the most exciting 25 seconds in college football just before kickoff running down the hill touching Howard's run what a setting on a night like this in a rivalry game like this that was first played back in 1896 they didn't have hair like that back in the late 1800s and he wanted to make sure you saw it too quickly out to East Sanders Sanders with that burst of speed trying to get to that marker. Let's check in with Reese. All right, Joe, you got a good one going there. It is time for Sports Center right now, brought to you by Dove Men Plus Care. Florida finishes 11-1. Gators with almost certainly going to get an automatic bid to a BCS game and at least still in the mix with a little more chaos. Maybe play for the championship after beating Florida State. Taking down those Knowles, Reese, who defeated Clemson 49 to 37 back in late September. Ball start. Offense, number 87. Five dollars for the Christmas Second down. Hubert Owens is our referee tonight, SEC crew. See the penalty situation with South Carolina this year, 10th in major college football. to the second and six now. Miles is taken down at the line of scrimmage that time. It was Jonathan Willard. Willard had a real nice read inside. Very aggressive. And when they good linebackers, when they see it, you can see him right inside. When they see it, you've got to take it. See how it opens right away. That, got, that center blocked back and opened the hole. Bam, you got to go get it right away. Willard did it really well. Bounced right off of T.J. Johnson. The center sped past him and made that key tackle. Now a third and six. Thompson over the middle. Gets it complete for a first down and more to Justice Cunningham. Ball 6'4", 264 of Justice Cunningham. Big target for Thompson. Yeah, that's just a simple... Simple read, you see this a bunch. What they'll do is they'll take the backs and they'll and they'll get them out in the flat, and everybody goes outside, and the tight end kind of delays, jumps to the middle. He's having a strong season as Cunningham. 19 yards on that reception to the Clemson 40. Wrapped up that time by Gary Peters. All right, Matt, what about your game plan for the Gamecocks? Well, you get Thompson in there, so the one thing you have to be able to do is he's got to be more than just a game manager. He's got to make the plays that present themselves, and he's done that so far. And then they have to have a nice balance in the run in the pass because you don't want to be one-dimensional. And then Clowney and Taylor, we talked about them in the previous series. They've got to beat and win their matchups against these offensive tackles. First down with the 25. Remains in the backfield with Dylan Thompson. Inside handoff for Miles. And he breaks three tackles before he is finally taken down by Rashard Hall, but able to get 10 yards on the run. 
That's that big offensive line with Miles. And that's the balance you're talking about, Tess. That, if, we can, if they can get that kind of balance in this game where they're going to be able to keep this defense off balance, pounding it on the inside, using the strength of that offensive line and Miles, and then Thompson can have the ability to throw and work his play action. First and 10 for the sophomore quarterback. Once again, he gets to Miles, and once again, he's tackled by Willard. And that was a blitz. That's Brent Venables, again, the defensive coordinator, getting pretty aggressive with his calls. In Washington, they're going to bring somebody off the side, and Willard just again, everything clears in front of him, and then, boom, you've got to go attack it. You can't wait. You have to go attack it. There's Brent. First year defensive coordinator came over from Oklahoma. Thompson checks across the line. Second down and nine. Play clock down to two. Myers. Timeout. And maybe they got the timeout. Indeed, they did. So South Carolina, Coach Spurry are able to call that timeout. Timeout. South Carolina. It's their first time out of the half. Head ball coach wants to talk things over. We'll take a break. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Shannon Spake with you here in Death Valley. Coach Spurrier's Gamecocks facing a second and nine. 14 yard line for the tie of this game in the first quarter. The receivers from Dylan Thompson. They pick up the pressure to the end zone. He goes. And that ball is caught for a touchdown by Bruce Ellington. What a great adjustment on the ball. At the end of that throw, Bruce Ellington is covered. They go back shoulder, but I want you to watch. Look how he look how he spins in midair. That's just that's really good. And he maintains the catch all the way through. Let's see if he does it. There's control. He's got it. Ellington's been coming on strong as the season goes on. Two sports star, point guard on the basketball team as well. Tremendous athlete. Got a glimpse of it on that catch, the effort he was able to make. Dylan Thompson gets the start tonight, in place of the bothered by the injury, Connor Shaw, and it pays off for the head ball coach. Seven seven game thanks to that guy Bruce Ellington his fifth touchdown reception of the year cousin is the starting running back for Clemson who we've been seeing a lot of early on Andre Ellington family affair is his cousin now back here on return. yards deep where the other Ellington Reese will take a knee. All right, Joe, time for a Dr. Pepper conference update from the Pac-12. Stanford and UCLA, Stephon Taylor is going to score. Now, remember, if Stanford wins this game, Stanford and UCLA will play for the Pac-12 championship Friday night. Should UCLA rally from this 21-7 deficit, then it would be Oregon and UCLA Friday night. For the back-to-back -back weeks there. Stanford, of course, shocked the world a week ago. It's created all this BCS turmoil. It's their fault. <laughs> There's McDowell now, and he gets to the edge while Roderick McDowell crossing midfield. Bryson Williams finally got to him. No, 32 yard run there by McDowell. Yeah, Tess, we, we were talking about Clemson at the beginning of the season. 
The one thing we both agreed on and spoke about on College Football Live was how fast this team was. And you really don't appreciate it until you see them in person. They've got speed everywhere. Now Boyd going to take a shot downfield. And coming up with it is DeAndre Hopkins. Did I mention to you that they're fast? Wow, are they? protection and Hopkins with a fantastic catch holds on to it in the end zone for six sixteen touchdown receptions for the man they call new DeAndre Hopkins and Taj Boyd what a season he's putting together 34th passing touchdown of the year that's a score record you to look up front, no pressure whatsoever. He's able to step into that thing, seize it the whole way. Actually, that ball held up just a tad, but Hopkins makes the nice adjustment and then muscles it out for the score. And Kim Augusti had his right arm in the mix there, but Hopkins strong enough to hold on to it. Let's go down to the field to Shannon. Well, Joe, I spoke with Taj Boy yesterday. He told me this is not just a rivalry game. This is a game about respect. He said he knew it would be important to get out here and make a statement early. He said their goal was to score on every possession because here at Clemson, the fans, the energy, they can certainly move the momentum, and that is what they're doing right now. Especially on a night like this. able to get out to the 25. Sunday night on ESPN and ESPNU, it is BCS Countdown presented by Allstate. First at 8.30 on ESPN, Reese and the guys, they will reveal the BCS standings. Then more analysis comes your way on ESPNU at 9 o'clock. Of course, we will see how it all plays out tonight in L.A. Number one, Notre Dame. Can they get through and move to 12-0 and secure a spot in the national championship? Aaron Thompson back out there after that two-play 75-yard scoring drive by Clemson. In a misdirection, Kenny Miles. Miles out to 31. Kenny Miles is a good little player. I think he, he has excellent vision. He has also very good runner's patience. And as you watch this game unfold, I think you'll ball coach there. You'll see a lot more of Kenny Miles. ahead for about two and a half yards. It'll be third and short tackled by Spencer Shuey. Spencer Shuey, they say he's the brains of that defense. He gets everybody lined up in their right position. You'll see him a lot of times, Tess, as the play is unfolding. He starts, you know, you'll see him right see he's just directing. A lot of directing going on out there. A lot of pointing and getting guys in the right spots. But he's doing it again. first quarter. And on the last play of the first quarter, 
It's be short. They stuff him short by a yard, and the flag comes in at the end. So we will check on that. us here on showdown saturday espn college football prime time presented by hampton hotels joe tessitore matt Phelan, shannon spake with you one of the great rivalries in the game clemson and south carolina as the game comes comes away and adam humphreys with the fair catch at the 41. <laughs> Quick fashion. Clemson was able to do damage. Two plays went for 75 yards in just 24 seconds. DeAndre Hopkins with a 43 yard touchdown reception from Taj Boyd. And that is our Mitsubishi Motors drive recap. Ellington once again on the direct snap. What a season he is working on here. 34 passing touchdowns, nine rushing touchdowns. As he looks to close things out in this rivalry game, with many talking about him earning a trip to New York in the Heisman chase. Second and seven. A little pressure off the edge from Clowney. And Boyd just gets rid of it. Yeah, a little pressure. They brought numbers. Clowney's left on block. When I say numbers, they're bringing extra people. And so double the A gaps on the inside, that's the fastest way to get to the quarterback right up the middle. Well, once your offensive line locks down to be able to pick them up, then Clowney comes free off the edge. Five receivers as they go empty here on third and seven. Jimmy Legree, who came up with it. That was a great break on the ball, Jimmy Legree. Was it too good of a break on the ball? Well, Brinson, uh, Bryson Williams not too happy with, with whatever call he heard out there. Pass interference. Defense. the interception as it was pass interference he comes in with the shoulder there before he's able to make the interception that's a tough call you know both guys have the right to the ball and that the, the defender people forget that the defender has the right to the ball as well that was a kind of a bang bang call first down for the Tigers at the 46 and Ellington takes it ahead for a gain of two yards tackled by Clowney Test. The bigger picture right now, we're talking about Taj Boyd and the skill people he has around him. This offensive line, they they have been struggling a little bit. Right now, they're playing as good as they can play against a good defensive front. Boyd steps up, flag is down as he is taken down back at the 46-yard line by Clowney.
holding on the offense. Number 68, that penalty is declined. Third down. It's their left guard, David Beasley. Big, powerful guy. Doesn't really have great movement. And that's what you want to try to do when you're playing against him, is to make him have to move, get to an edge. Third and nine now. get free as he was taken down by Chaz Sutton. So we'll send out Spencer Benton to punt away. Does his job well as he pins it at the nine yard line. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Shannon Spake with you back here in Clemson, South Carolina. 7 lead for the Tigers. Last year they were held to just 153 total yards, only scored 13 points. Offense in better form early here tonight. Blitzes here. Kenny Miles. Unable to find anything there. She's in. Jonathan Willard, that Clemson defense man. Yeah, that's Willard again. And again, you can see Brent Venables, he's calling blitzes off the edge with his corners. He's getting his offense or defensive lineman to move, to create movement up front. And then I think the defenders themselves are doing a really nice job. Once they see things, they're attacking things downhill. It's all part of Brent Venables. You can see him right there. He knows he's got. He knows he's got to have this. His group play their best game tonight. Dylan Thompson out to Sanders, and Sanders with that speed into the open field and makes a move out to the 45. And found by Jonathan Makes, who was the last hope, a 36-yard reception for Sanders. And as you see, Ellington coming off the field. He had the touchdown earlier. That A. Sanders, man, he is sudden, isn't he? Oh. Not a big guy, only 5'8", and about a, what, about a buck 80 or something, 75. But, boy, he can pick him up and put him down. He's fun to watch. And there's Ellington, intended to by the medical staff. Thompson to pass here. He's going to take a shot downfield. And that ball should have been intercepted by Gary Peters. That was an opportunity. Those are the ones that you want. Bird was right there. Peters, the corner, should have had himself a pick. Amir Bird was the intended receiver. But it was thrown short into the inside. And, and, and Bird never even turned around to be a defender. That ball... That's an opportunity. That's just sitting up there. That's a that's a play you have to make. Second and ten now. Thompson out of the gun here. They bring four, and he is ripped down by Corey Crawford. Yes, Crawford got there. They only rushed four. They were going to play coverage, and Crawford, you're going to watch him right down here at number 94-3, rather. He gets right around that edge. Does a nice job of attacking that up shoulder. He opened the gate. He opened that left, that left foot way too much. And it was taken advantage of by Crawford. Yeah, that number 93, like Gaines Adams and Daquan Towers used to wear here. Clemson. Clemson's going to use 
their second timeout of this first half. Hey, Tiger fans, don't forget to purchase all your official This is one of them. 110 meeting. Goes all the way back to 1896. By the way, the teams have 19 combined wins entering this game. That's the most ever in this showdown. It's good to have both teams playing so well. Number 11 and number 12, just the fifth time that they have met as ranked teams. A nice pictures of some of the old guys there. You saw William Refrigerator Perry there, number 66. George Rogers on the other side. between these two. Shannon? Well, Dabo Sweeney said this week that this is a rivalry. These teams, they live with all week long at the grocery store, at church. They are living literally next to fans of the other team. I spoke with Coach Spurrier before the game. He told me this rivalry, Ryan, reminds him very much of the Florida-Florida State rivalry. He said when he first got to South Carolina, there were signs all over the locker room, beat Clemson. He took them down. He said he didn't want his players focusing on just Clemson, but this season. Yeah, that every game is a big game. He took a shot through it incomplete. Tess, I gotta tell you, there's a kid that gets on the field for passing situations for Clemson who is a legit player. Vic Beasley, number three. He's got great speed. Not good, great. He kind of reminds me of what Fred Dean was early when he came in. Not a real big guy, only about maybe 225 pounds, but he can really fly. Beasley's third in the ACC in sacks, has eight on the year. He was coming after Dylan Thompson there. Tyler Hall once away. He takes a Clemson bounce and is down at about the 38. Tigers up 14 to 7 here in Death Valley. That was last night at the SO Club here in Clemson, South Carolina. A legendary sports bar that came from a 1920s gas station. One of those must do's if you come to a Clemson game. It's done by the SO Club. His way out the quarterback to the 41 yard line. The junior quarterback who's been coming on in recent weeks as a Heisman contender. Currently fifth in the polling of Heisman Trophy voters. Had that record setting game a week ago with eight touchdowns. And tonight he's got a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. Time to get Sammy Watkins involved. Second and six. Here's Ellington. And Andre Ellington. You know, the last series, the South Carolina defense started to look like the South Carolina defense against that Clemson offensive line. And then now here comes Ellington. Now watch the O-line, just getting everybody on somebody. And you saw Clowney go for Taj Boyd. And Ellington was able to take advantage of that and duck underneath. Here's Boyd. And that time he's taken down, sacked back. At the 49-yard line, it was Byron Girardeau and J.T. Surratt. Yeah, he was he was looking down the field. He wanted to get himself a nice big play to Andre Hopkins, but the coverage was there. And because of that coverage, Girardeau was able to make his 300-whatever pounds felt. That ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. That was Devin Taylor, and that's exactly what he can do with that wingspan. He goes 6'8". A nice big wingspan, like you said. He does a nice job. Watch his eyes. See, he kept his eyes up on the quarterback. They tried to cut him. What you're trying to do when the ball's coming out quick, you tried to cut him and get their hands down. He was not able to do that. Taylor kept his eyes up and got his hands up, knocked it down, sets up this third down. Third and 14, D.J. Howard in the game. Hopkins hadn't even turned around. Boyd had released it. Hopkins was covered by Victor Hampton. So they'll bring the punt team on. 
good defensive series for the Gamecocks. Hampton's the best cover corner they have. Benson back on to punt. High and angled kick. And once again, he's able to put it in that corner. South Carolina trailing by seven with the ball when we return. Come on, man. 14 7 Clemson on top of South Carolina. Bruce Ellington had his fifth touchdown earlier tonight. Got banged up on that last possession. Yeah, and it was a legit play. This is not a cheap shot for Sean Hall, number 31. Now he's reading us. He has coverage on Miles underneath 31. And you see Ellington coming down like he's going to block him, which is what they try to do. And so what you try to do as a defender is run through the block, which he did. And he, he brought uh, brought a little bit of pain with him, and Ellington's feeling it. Also had a touchdown catch right down the middle of the field a year ago against Clemson. That was from 49 yards. All right, Joe, Taco Bell studio update. Johnny Manziel and Texas A&M, they're blowing out Missouri. Now, Manziel left the game briefly, was holding his knee, took a big hit. We see him at Malcolm Kennedy here. This is after the knee injury, so wearing a brace now appears to be fine. Hits Ryan Swope, just scrambled and hit Mike Evans for another one seconds ago. 34 nothing. Aggies are rolling. This time, able to get it out to the 33-yard line, tackled by Travis Blanks. Anytime you see those quick screens or bubble screens, those things are only effective if the receivers, the other receivers, block. If they do a nice job of blocking, then they become pretty effective. And so what you've seen here, Ellington's had some success. That's because his teammates on the outside are doing a good job of getting the body on the defender. And three. Dylan Thompson, the second start of his career. In there for the injured Connor Shaw. The pitch to Miles gives it back to Thompson. And Thompson's going to try to run for the first down. And I think he stepped out short of it. It'll depend on the spot. We will see. They are going to try to go the old okie doke, but the coverage down the field pass. Excellent job. Excellent job. And then. Dylan Thompson did a nice job of realizing that there was nothing to throw to, so he tried to get what he could. Third down and one. As Thompson didn't take that extra stride to pick up the first down. Remember Connor Shaw's the more accomplished running quarterback, but he's been dealing with that sprain left foot. This time, plenty of room as he sold it well and crosses midfield. You said it right, they sold it well on a power. They brought in Connor McLaurin, the fullback, and they hit that thing hard. Watch how hard they go into that. He just pulls it out right around the edge. That defensive end's got to hold that edge. He's got to stay as deep as the deepest. Always got to peek back there to make sure it doesn't clear. That time Thompson just took advantage of it as you're looking at Connor Shaw there on the sideline. Got his helmet on. He was warming up a little while ago. 19 yard run by Thompson. Now over the middle as he gets it complete to Justice Cunningham. Shannon? Well, uh, Joe, this Clemson team looking to stop South Carolina from winning four in a row in this rivalry. Dabo Sweeney told us yesterday that in those three previous losses, Clemson didn't just lose, lose to South Carolina. They lost to Clemson. They beat themselves. Well, Dabo Sweeney came over before the defense got back on the field, reminded his players of that. Don't beat yourself. He told them, settle down, get out there, just play your game and settle down. South Carolina's first three-game win streak against Clemson since the late 60s. On second and three, Jonathan Willard. He's been doing a good job filling that hole and making tackles like that. He 
Bucks having himself a good game here. Through this first half, he's been aggressive. He's been reading things really nicely. And he's been wrapping up. You know, you've seen a nice job here tonight of tackling. Jonathan Willard has led the charge in that department. Nice job of wrapping things up. Makes for a third and four. As Ellington will be split to the near side. And Miles will be the back with Thompson out of the shotgun. They only bring three. Thompson steps up looking and able to connect that time for a first down to Kenny Miles who leaked out of the backfield. Let's check in with Reese. All right, Joe, prime time pulse very quickly. Notre Dame and USC just started on ABC. Notre Dame walked it down the field, just stopped on third down. It's a fourth and seven field goal try coming. On ESP2, Johnny Menzel's put up very solid numbers, nearly 200 yards passing. They're killing Missouri. And the Egg Bowl on ESPNU is a tight one. Hotty toddy trying to get bowl eligible up by three. Just part of the great action tonight on the showdown Saturday. First down throw down by Thompson as he gets it to East Sanders. And it'll be a first down for the Gamecocks. At about the 16-yard line. That's a heck of a throw. And that's from that's from the hash to the sideline. And it's right where it has to be. And that's the he's uh, you know, as this game has gone on, it looks like Dylan Thompson is getting more comfortable with what the heck he's doing. He's feeling comfortable taking off and running for the first down when he had to, but those throws, those are money. So we'll take a look to see if he was in bounds on that reception. Now this is the ace Sanders, and this is the speed cut. And it looks like he has control, and the foot is down right. Well, what you have to be able to see is if that left foot isn't out before the right foot comes down. Yeah, it looks like the left, the right foot was down before the left. Should be a catch. He runs that route. You have to respect the speed, and then he'll do that speed cut and get it. You really don't see any slowdown. It's full speed in and out of your break. Henry Ellard of the Rams, he was fantastic at it. Ace Sanders looks like he has that one down pretty good, as well as the catch. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. So. Confirm meaning that they saw the video evidence that says what you saw on the field, what was called on the field, is what we can confirm. And a first down for South Carolina. You know, a thing that's interesting for me, Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, he's calling the defensive play, and then his defensive line looks over to him, and he gives them the kind of rush he wants done also. So he's given a couple things. You watch him. They stop right before and they look over to him and he gives him another signal. Mike Davis and Kenny Miles both in the backfield now. As Thompson pulls a shoulder and fights his way against Xavier Brewer. It's a nice gain of about two and a half yards. That's a good tackle by Xavier Brewer. You're out there one on one all by yourself. What you have to be able to do is take the inside away and force him to go outside. Make him go one way. That's exactly what he does. And that's, that's a big kid. The Brewer just shoves his face in there and does a nice job. And Thompson is four inches taller and 25 pounds heavier than Xavier Brewer. Second and eight. Checking it again. They bring pressure. Thompson steps up against it and cuts inside the 10 yard line. So it'll be third down from there as Grady Jarrett made the tackle on Dylan Thompson. You can see Dylan Thompson's confidence grow as this game goes on. Four. 
Thompson to the end zone. And that was defended that time as it goes incomplete. But Travis Blanks on the coverage. Well, they wanted Ace Sanders, and Ace Sanders had the back. I mean, he was behind the defender. He didn't like what was going on, but you can see that's a... Yeah, as you can see, he's complaining right there, but uh, Banks did a nice job of taking it away, but should not have let him get behind him. That brings on Adam Yates, the fifth-year senior, finally getting his opportunity to be the game pass place kicker this year. Seven of nine from within 40 yards, this from 27. And he puts it through to close into that Clemson lead, 14-10 game. Death Valley, where the home team has a 14 to 10 lead with 2.40 to go in the half. Aerial coverage being provided by MetLife. You see how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Shannon Spink with you. Dylan Thompson leading the Gamecocks on that last drive. Available drive as South Carolina cuts the lead to four. Big boot by Hull. Let's check in with Reese. All right, Joe, coming up in just a moment on the Buick Halftime Report, Notre Dame and USC are underway. Irish up 3-0. SC had a ball bounce off Marquise Lee's hand in the end zone, so may have a good one going there. Gators put a beat down on Florida State for the most part, particularly late in that game. We'll also have the great rivalries in addition to a record-breaking touchdown. Where do you see what happened Ohio State and Michigan? Also, Bedlam was a great finish. Looking forward to hearing what Reese and the guys have to say at the half. Ohio State back in their season. Out to the 41 yard line. Speaking of quarterback play, oh, Taj Boyd. Taj Boyd just looks so much more confident. He lost about 20 pounds from a year ago. That's been well documented, but I think the bigger thing is his confidence has grown. He knows exactly what he's doing right now. That was low into the inside as Watkins couldn't secure it. You know, Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, said, you know, we had a discussion where I said, Taj, you don't have to be perfect. Just be the best you can be. I said it was quite a relief for him to hear that. So much pressure on this young man here at Clemson to lead this team. Over the course of the past month, he's been playing great football. Brandon Ford, senior tight end, out to midfield. The third and one from there. Got to get the first here, obviously, but the guy they need to get involved more as you can look at those points in the half that he's doing is if you want to get some points, Sammy Watkins is a guy they need to get more involved right now. Third and one. Here's Boyd. And he easily will move the chains. Minute 50 remaining in the half. So all the success that Clemson has had scoring. But as you pointed out, you know, outside of Florida State, all opponents that you would expect that kind of production against this year for Clemson. This a test, one of the best defenses in the country, South Carolina. Pressure off the edge, but he launches it downfield, and it was thrown up and intercepted. Devontae Holloman with the pickoff. The pressure came from Aldrich Fordham. And Boyd launched it up there and paid the price. You can watch the pressure off the top side. Here it comes. Clowney was part of it, and Boardroom's the other guy. And then the ball just kind of flutters up top there. And he's able to make himself a catch there. Holloman just kind of tracked the ball. So now that gives South Carolina a minute 32 to work with. Two timeouts remain for the Gamecocks. And they go with a delayed handoff to Kenny Miles. 
And Miles gets four yards on the carry, tackled by Quandon Christian. He was looking for Nick Jones. Clemson defensive front. Getting a little bit of pressure. Malachi Goodman that time, number 97, at left defensive end, able to put a little rush on Thompson to make him at least feel it. And if they can do that with, with four, that's a big deal for Clemson because they need, like I said, their secondary, which is played. Their secondary, though, they've been beat up, and they don't have all their, they don't have their top-line guys. 36. And it'll depend on the mark that time. He's going to be short. Incomplete. That looks like that's an incompletion. It is an incompletion. Travis Blanks had the coverage that time. As he looked... Right at the line to make for A. Sanders, who was never able to secure it. That's a really good job of defending right there. Humphrey's back for the whole punt. Air Hawk at the 27 yard line. We invite you to get your NFL Sunday started off right. First Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m. on ESPN. You got Chris Berman and all the guys. We'll get you the latest news from around the league right up until kickoff. And then on ESPN 2 at 11 a.m. It is fantasy football now. The experts to help you set your lineup. Latest news and injury reports and the predictions of all the big performances on your Sunday afternoon. Gets it to Sammy Watkins. One timeout remains for Clemson as the clock counts down. They gotta, they've got to be faster than this. They've got to have a couple of them called so you get right to the line of scrimmage and make your call. Especially to run. That'll stop the clock for a moment as they move the chains as Ellington takes it forward. <laughs> too much time just to spike it there's a flag down in that one anyway Hit a 61-yarder in ACC record earlier this season. Came against Ball State. That 25 seconds on their clock is wrong. It should be 15 seconds. There Ten we second go. runoff, and there you see it updated. Brown fight his way to midfield. Take a timeout Dabble right here. Sweeney asking for the timeout. And they will get the timeout with four seconds remaining in the ball just at midfield. Dylan Thompson playing maybe better than some 
expected opposite Taj Boyd here in this first half. Yeah, I think half. Dylan Thompson's done very well here in the first half, and I think I think the second half we're going to see even a better half of football. I think they're just starting to get settled into what they are, and I think Dylan Thompson's getting a feel for exactly what they are. See them measuring. I think we just got a chain link or two short there after that last play. You know, Taj Boyd came in with all the big stats. Dylan Thompson, we found out just about an hour before kickoff that he would get the start that Connor Shaw, who's been dealing with that sprained left foot, limited in practice this week. And you look at those numbers, and Thompson's had a nice night. He's made a couple of really nice throws, some tough throws from hash to sideline. <laughs> able to scramble and use his feet when he's had to. And Create a little bit, move around in the pocket and manage it. Make a cut like there. there but there's a nice throw to the outside. Ace Sanders. And he's been able to do it all night. As this game has gone on, he has seemingly gained more confidence with his throws and with his offense. Just a sophomore, right, Tess? Yep. Dylan Thompson, who came in early this year, the sophomore for Connor Shaw. When Week one, Shaw was banged up against Vanderbilt, and Thompson got the start in week two, had a big game against East Carolina, went for over 300 yards and three touchdowns. And on a night when they need him most, stepping up opposite Taj Boyd, who's been as hot as any quarterback in the country in recent weeks, and he's going to have one more shot here with four seconds remaining in the half. South Carolina, the quarterback spot, looks like they're pretty well set. You got Connor Shaw, you got Dylan Thompson. They have a freshman who came in who's Brandon Nosovich, who's been, they tell me, he's been tearing it up in practices. So, it's like the old ball coach has a few. See if Boyd can bring this up the pressure game. So, he just gets rid of it. Clemson has scored in 42 of 45 quarters this season. Shut out this quarter against that top notch South Carolina defense. Got a good one here in this rivalry game in Death Valley. Let's go down to Shannon. Coach, you said earlier this week that a key to this game would be to slow down the Clemson offense. At times, you have done that. Yeah, defense has played well. We gave up that one big one. And offensively, we only had a couple drives. We need to do better offensively, and uh, but our defense is playing well. Pre-game, you told me you expected Connor Shaw to play some. We have seen Thompson evolve. We'll wait and see. He may get in there before it's over. Thanks, Coach. Well, Thompson's playing pretty well instead of Shaw. 14-10 Clemson. Let's join Reese Davis, Mark May, and Lou Holtz back in the studio for the Buick Halftime Report. Gentlemen, take it away. We welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels, the ACC, on ESPN on this great showdown Saturday. Exciting night here in Death Valley. The good hands play brought to you by Allstate. A couple of the receivers in the first half. Bruce Ellington started things off from Dylan Thompson. And then we saw DeAndre Hopkins from Taj Boyd, Matt. Well, I think what we saw was what we expected out of Taj Boyd. I don't know what we expected really out of Dylan Thompson, but I think he's exceeded any of those things that we may have. He's just been fantastic. He's made some big throws. He's bought time in the pocket. He's scrambled and, can, and uh, extended plays. I think that's as good as you can see. And I think he's gotten better from the beginning of this of this game to the second through the second quarter. I think he gained a little bit of confidence. 14-10, Clemson lead. As you look at the first half stats, keep in mind Clemson scored 191 points in second quarters this year, unable to break across that goal line. Sweeney told his guys during the half they got to come back out here. They got to play a second half of football better than the first half. Settle down, he said. Come out here, get in a rhythm. He said this team, this South Carolina team, is very, very good. They are not going to give you this win. He also told me he felt like they needed to clean some stuff up on offense, specifically with their running game. Issues here. 
Jackson starts things off with a completion out to Ellington, who spins for a gain of eight. So Dylan Thompson found out about an hour before kick that he would get the start in place of Connor Shaw. And Shaw, of course, a veteran, 16 and 3 as a starting quarterback, but limited in practice this week with a sprained left foot. Thompson, the second start of his career. He was outstanding back in September in week two against East Carolina. And he's been steady and reliable, and as you said, Matt, gaining confidence here against Clemson. Second and two. Kenny Miles with good, hard leg drive out to the third yard line and a first down. But I think the thing that's significant is now, he may not have known he was going to start when he got here today, but he took all the reps this week in practice, or the majority of the reps, and that's a big deal. So he was familiar with the game plan. He was going with the ones and throwing with all the guys that he's going to be playing with, and so I think that's a big deal. Thompson, that ball was low and hit the ground before Nick Jones could get to it. Then he also has some guys who can make plays. Ace Sanders on the outside, good player. Kenny Miles, another good player. Ellington on the outside, number 23, another good player. So there are guys who can, who are playmakers. He doesn't have to do it all by himself. Second 10, there is Bruce Ellington. Five touchdown catches now on the year. Thompson downfield and that is caught streaking across the middle was Nick Jones and a big gainer for the Gamecocks down to the 39 yard line of Clemson. I like the way Thompson goes back to it. Dropped it on the previous play but here's the big deal. I want you to watch first right here. Nice protection. This is a long time for this route to develop. It's a deep route and he gets to the middle of the field in the middle of those defenders but because of the protection. Thompson makes the throw. And now Miles, nowhere to go as he was met right away by Xavier Brewer. I think this is a significant drive for this Gamecock offense. They need to come out to start this half and put an exclamation point on it with points. If they can do that, they can start to dictate the tempo of this second half. Offense that has struggled at times this year, especially on the road. Ten, Thompson. That was batted away by Jonathan Willard. Willard's been very active in this game. He's playing a heck of a game. This is the best game that I've. I haven't seen all their games, but I've watched a significant amount of of their tape. And this is number hit, number 46 right here. This is the best I've seen him play. Very active in the run game. He's been very aggressive. Nice job of sitting there in that zone and just waiting for the ball to be thrown in a nice break. Two for four on these third long situations and a little finger pointing on the right side of that offensive line. Defense in the neutral zone, number 97, um, offensive move, five yards for the previous spot. Still number 97. Nick Jones. Jones who played his high school football with Marcus Lattimore. Running back who once again suffered a season ending knee injury. Loved by the South Carolina football program. And a lot of college football fans. That's a fantastic player. First down now, Thompson. 
Last time, checks down over the middle, but could not connect with Kenny Miles, who's covered by Spencer Shuey. Ball coach is getting a little fired up out there. And I talked to a couple guys who were coaching him when he was with the Redskins. Tim Hasselback in particular told me, you know, he's an interesting guy. He said he has a great mind for the game. He said he sees things a little bit different, and he'll call and play and say, listen, if we do this and this, if you just go down and throw the ball to right this spot, we're going to make a play. He just sees the game maybe different than most people do. Second and ten. Thompson. And that was nearly intercepted. The flag is down. As you saw Brewer try to jump in front. Flag is down back at the 33, so we will check on that. That was his worst throw of the night. Over on the offense, number 60. 10 yards from the previous spot. Skip second down. He was lucky with that one. Could have been picked. He threw it behind. That'll set them back to the 38-yard line. Second down and long here, so you don't have to get it all back at once. You still have third down to be able to get it. If you can get about half of it, you're in good shape. Thompson steps up. He's going to cut. And he will step out at the 34-yard line. Will be third down from there. Nicely done by Clemson. Just with the minimum amount of rush and the majority of the defenders sitting back, playing a zone, making him taking the deeper stuff away and making them wanting to throw it underneath. But there's, he saw no one to throw it to, and it sets up this third long. By the way, third and 16 from the 34. Adam Yates, the kicker, has hit a 51-yarder, so that's right at the threshold right there at the 34-yard line of his range. Third and 16. Thompson over the middle, and he gets it complete inside the 10-yard line, crossing the goal line, making one great move was Ace Sanders. I was one third down late, Tess. That's the guy. That Ace Sanders, that's a heck of a good player. Not a big man, but boy, he's got big play in him. He's got great suddenness, quickness, and ability to make you miss. Now, like you saw at the end, even when the defender got a hand on him, he turned it into six. My, oh, my, can Sanders move. 34-yard touchdown reception on a third and 16. Makes it a three-point margin. What a good night out of Dylan Thompson. First lead of the game for the Gamecocks. Glad you're with us here at Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina. Gamecocks 17-14, their first lead of the night over the rival Tigers. Ace Sanders now over 100 yards receiving just had. 34-yard touchdown reception moments ago. As Adam Yates kicks away and it bounces into the end zone. Let's go back and show you what Thompson and Sanders hooked up with. Well, Hey, Sanders is going to be up in the slot. They're going to play a coverage on. You're going to see they're only rushing three. They're dropping eight, so they're going to kind of man it on the top side he gains leverage right there to the outside the defenders and then watch the power he's not a big man but he does have great balance and ability to burst as you saw at the end but if you don't wrap your hands up Richard Hall didn't he'll make you miss Andre Ellington just gets a yard there Shannon yeah, Joe, in the locker room during halftime, Coach Spurrier, he looked directly at his wide receivers and he had this message. He said, make the play on the ball, make the big plays, extend those plays. And we talked about uh, we talked about the quarterback just getting into his groove. Thompson, he came over here just a second ago and bumped knuckles with each and every one of his linemen. Boyd is taken down by the All-American.
Ken Jadavian Clowney and Devin Taylor both getting after Taj Boyd. Well, there's the bookends. You can see them. There's Clowney on the top side. There's Taylor on the other side. Now, this is actually, this is pretty well blocked. You just got to get out of there. And Clowney just stays with it, does a nice job. Coverage took that away. He should turn around and thank his secondary. First sack of the night for Clowney, and they're looking for more against Boyd as he's able to get free and back out to the 26 yard line. It was third and long. So that front four for South Carolina, so dangerous. Back at the line of scrimmage. This is the point right here, Tess. You can feel it in the stadium. They've Illegal formation on the kicking team. That's five yards to be added on to the, to the return. First down. Remember, Matt, we talked about Clemson and their inability in the second quarter. And now struggling offensively here in the third as well. we'll take a break. South Carolina three. They're not trying out for stomp on Broadway. That is the Clemson Army ROTC. As they say, protecting Howard's Rock in the 24 hours prior to the Clemson South Carolina game. That steady drum and cadence can be heard all across campus, and there's not much left of those balls after this. Down at the end there. It's going to be a face mask as Bruce Ellington is able to get out to the 37 yard line. It's a big series right here at Des for Clemson. You can kind of feel it get slipping away. Really, they haven't really done much since the first half. Really, since the first quarter. Personal foul. Face mask. Flat, and nobody picked him up. 
24 yards later, it's a big first down. Third and ten was a big opportunity for that Clemson defense. And instead of first down at the 25 for South Carolina. Miles straight up the middle. And a gain of about eight and a half yards taken down by Brewer. I like Miles. The more I watch him, the more I like him. He's got, he's got some really good acceleration. And we said at the start of the game that he had to let his playmakers make some plays, and they've all done it. You see what Sanders has done here tonight. Ellington as well. He just distributed the ball extremely well. First 100-yard receiving game in the career of A. Sanders. Second two. Justice Cunningham. Check out the flag back at the 22 yard line. It's going to be a hold against Carolina. The Corey Robinson, the left offensive tackle. Strongest kid in this team. Second and 12 now. Here's pressure right up the middle. And Thompson somehow escapes it and then slides ahead at the 16 yard line. And that mark is going to be just a yard short. He came with pressure, but it cleared in the middle. Thompson saw it right away. Set up this third down. usually means a hold. That time they got Hard Shell's nephew, Brandon Shell. Nephew of the man. NFL Hall of Famer. Oh, I played with Art. Great player for a long time. Right here, number 71 right there. Grabbed the back of his jersey and that's what they saw. Art Shell. Now from 43. And he 
he's good on that too. So they'll keep him on scholarship, no doubt about it. 20 to 14 game cuts. Game day is going to be in Atlanta next week. Alabama and Georgia playing for the SEC title, and if everything holds for them, the assumption of trip to the easiest title game. We'll see what happens with Notre Dame and USC and how that plays out. Of course, tomorrow night, the BCS standings will be revealed. The BCS standings brought to you by Allstate as they stand right now. Florida State, number 10, lost to Florida today. Now, Florida State obviously beat Clemson earlier this year. They're getting a trip to the ACC championship game. Face Georgia Tech there. Clemson sitting here with a chance against their rivals tonight. With a signature win, moved to 11 wins. They actually end up being the highest ranked ACC team. Let's check in with Reese. All right, Joe, give you prime time pulse right now. Notre Dame on ABC, about a minute to go in the first half, holding on to a 13-10 lead. Irish have the ball, but they're deep in their own end. Texas A&M destroying Missouri on ESPN2. Johnny Manziel is playing. Heidi Toddy Gashimati, Rebels just about ready to go bowling if they can hold this 17-point lead on state. It's on ESPNU. And Reese Hugh Freeze has done a nice job with Ole Miss this year. Boy, it's going to launch it downfield, and that ball on the fingertips of Brown is hauled in. Great effort by Jerron Brown. A heck of a catch by Jerron Brown, and I like the design of what they're doing. Now, they haven't really done anything since the first quarter. Jerron Brown takes care of that with the first play right here in this series. They rolled out Taj Boyd to buy some time to alleviate a little bit of the pressure, and Brown makes it deliver. Ellington. That was a good burst by Ellington to the 25. Shannon. Well, Joe, these chairs right behind me, this is where the offense was sitting during that last series. They were very calm, frustrated almost. The only movement I saw was Taj Boyd's legs. He was sitting down and they were bouncing up and down. Offensive coordinator came over and said there's a lot of games to be played. Yeah, anxious to get back out there. Find guys like Jerron Brown streaking down the field. It's a big series for this Clemson offense. Seen what they what they haven't really been able to do since the first quarter is string some plays together. That first big play obviously had put them in this position. They've got to finish this series with a, with a touchdown. Not three. They've got to get six. Throws off of it, but he threw it to the outside of the intended target, New Hopkins. Which sets up this big third down. And so protection for the offensive line right now to give Boyd some time. And don't be surprised if they're going to roll. Give him a little bit of dash. Move him to his side to alleviate some of the pressure that could be coming. Such good targets and spots like this. Boyd. The pressure goes underneath, and it'll be short. But that first down line, as he was able to find Watkins. So a fourth down. He'll try for this field goal, which is the right thing to do, but that's a wasted opportunity. They needed six points there. Because right now, South Carolina, they've hit their group. Chandler Catanzaro. Perfect 10 for 10 inside of 40 this year. This from 37. And it is back to a field goal ball game. 20 to 17. Clemson cuts into that second half lead. Most of our guys have never been to Death Valley. The original Death Valley is right here. I think in case anybody has any doubts, it's right here. That's right, there's two Death Valleys. Yeah, I forgot about that.
Was LSU the first one or the second one? Who knows? They were first. Oh, okay. I can see where he might uh, have a little confusion. You know, our guys have never been to USC. California's a long way. The incorrigible Steve Spurrier when it comes to stirring the pot and rivalries. Dabo Sweeney enjoying some of that back and forth. Playing off with USC, the other USC. Notre Dame in a competitive game, 16 to 10, as we are here. It's a great rivalry between these two schools. Victor Hampton on the return now for the game comes. Let's check in with Reese. All right, Joe, time for Sports Center right now, brought to you by Dove Men Plus Carry. Record setting day for Monte Ball of Wisconsin against Penn State. Scored his 79th touchdown. That's an FBS record. Badgers did lose in overtime. They'll go to the Big Ten Championship game to take on Nebraska. Sports Center, by the way, is currently on ESPN News. All right, Reese. Here in Death Valley, 110th meeting between South Carolina and Clemson. It comes with both teams. Ranked in the top 15, number 12 against number 11. South Carolina's won three straight in this great rivalry. Clemson, their only loss to Florida State. Open earn in that large BC is pole berth. Dylan Thompson has played well, unable to connect that time. Dylan Thompson has been one of the big stories of the night. We found out about an hour before kickoff that he would get the start because Connor Shaw, the veteran quarterback, was limited in practice this week dealing with a sprained left foot. You see what Taj Boyd has done on the night, one of the Heisman contenders, but Thompson has outplayed him with 271 passing yards, a couple of touchdown strikes as Shaw has just been an observer watching the sophomore quarterback lead the game Cox here in Death Valley up by three of the riders. Second and ten. Flag is down. As he was just able to get it away, the pressure came from Josh Watson. That was an outstanding play by Thompson. He muscled that thing to avoid the sack and threw it out. Regardless of the flag, that was a big time play. Offside. Defense. Number three. I want you to watch the wherewithal he has. Understands he's outside the pocket. Now he's got to just muscle it through. He knows he has to get it beyond the line of scrimmage, which he does. That's just a big, powerful kid being able to make that play right there. That's that's impressive. Second and five. Thompson checked down to Myers, who makes one putt. It'll move the chains at the 40-yard line, tackled by Watson. He's getting up slow, but that Miles, he's not getting up. Holding his knee, that's not a good sign. That's a good football player. Catches the ball well. Like I said, he's excellent suddenness and very good patience as a runner. See him reaching for that left knee. Of course, South Carolina earlier this year, they lost Marcus Lattimore again. They're stellar running back. Mike Davis, true freshman, is the only other running back that they list on the depth chart. Watch him. He's just going to oh, just kind of falls from here or whatever. You never know what the heck makes it happen. But he's he been is... good for Dylan Thompson to lean on tonight. Keep in mind, Matt, that. Connor Shaw is not playing tonight at quarterback. He's the one that had so much success in the victory over Clemson last year running the ball. Thompson's more of the passing quarterback. Yeah, and, and he still has movement. And we said at the start of the game that what he really needed to do is use the players around him. And he's done an excellent job of that. And when he's had to be, when he's been called upon to have to carry the load, he's been able to do that as well, Tess. So Mike Davis comes in. Replacing the injured Kenny Miles. And he gets the call here. Trying to fight his way out to the 43-yard line. 
Coverage of Monday Night Football starts at 6.30 with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Then at 8.30, Cam Newton and the Panthers going up against Deshaun Jackson and the Eagles. Monday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. A couple of teams struggling there. A couple of good coaches struggling there with their teams. I'll tell you, the Eagles, I watched them a week ago on film, and they look, they did not look like they had, they had the look of a team that's not going to win again. Second and seven, quick strike out to that first down marker right at midfield as he was able to find Ace Sanders, who's had an outstanding night. That was a bullet. That thing was right on the money where it needed to be. Thompson, what he's done tonight is just, hey, find out where Ace Sanders is. Watch his ball come out of his hand. That thing's, that thing's humming. Put a little spin on that thing, and Sanders comes down with it. Big night here for Ace Sanders. Sanders who scored with receiving touchdown, punt return touchdown, even threw, threw a touchdown pass earlier this year. And Davis now just able to get a yard at that time. And if you're just joining us with USC and Notre Dame at the half, See what Clemson and South Carolina have been able to do matching up tonight. 287 passing yards from Dylan Thompson, the backup quarterback for South Carolina. And it was given a start. Second and nine. Sprinting to the far side and one hopped it to Ace Sanders that time. So it'll be third and long. This is a big down right here for Clemson. Down by three. Their defense has been on the field for the majority of this second half. They've got to get themselves off the field and give their offense another chance to score some points. The best thing this defense can do right now is have their offense put some points up for their back. But they can't do that unless they get the stop right here. It's a good one. That'll move the chains. Just your outlet pass. They're throwing, they're, they're going downfield, and they're taking that with coverage, and they're letting it on the underneath side of that flat. All that is is just control. You're trying to control the defenders, and it's your outlet. He dumps it, and the rest is done to the tune of a first down. Elbow swinging fired up as Mike Davis now in the game for Kenny Miles. Extend the play on first down. Downfield that was almost intercepted off the hands of Xavier Brewer. Brewer had another shot at a pick. He doesn't come down with it. Had one earlier in the game. This one, I believe, through his hands. He's not going to like that when he sees that. He's got a great opportunity. Reaching it at the high point. Couldn't quite pull it down. Second and ten. A little bit of pressure as Thompson threw it low and incomplete. He's looking for D.L. Moore. So be third and ten. Same thing as they were. This third and long. Thompson's been able to come up with the play. Clemson defense has not been able to generate a rush without bringing extra guys. And when they've done that, they've weakened their secondary. You put more for there's always a quick throw quo. I'm going to bring an extra guy to rush. It weakens your coverage. Let's see what they do here. They got to him. The front was able to get to him. Malachi Goodman 
Tracking down Dylan Thompson. They showed him one thing, and then they dropped out. They showed five, and then they dropped out. So they went with a four-man rush and gave you coverage behind. Thompson wasn't able to find it. Let's see what they do here. Lost the ball just at the end of this play, but was able to quickly fall right on it. So they bring Brewer off the corner. Now they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Or maybe a, maybe a quick kick. Or boots punt. Fourth down 11. Oh, they're going for it. And it's incomplete and a flag comes in. As Rory Anderson was covered by Rashard Hall. And a flag came in on fourth and 11. Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, rolled the dice and came with a blitz. And it seemingly paid off until right at the end, Richard Hall. Pass on the first. Defense. Is called. <laughs> Rory Anderson across the middle. Watch Richard. Shoulder, right arm coming across, and Spurrier's reaction. Saved by the flag. First down at the 25. A tough call. to the 21-yard line, tackled by Spencer Shuey. And Thompson. Oh, yeah, he's Another looking at it. Very thankful, isn't he? That's a reaction to the pass interference. Keeping this drive alive as we're under a minute to play here in this third quarter. Such a heated rivalry. 110th meeting between these two. So much on the line. South Carolina looking Another double-digit win season. They stand at 9-2 right now. Clemson trying to play their way into an at-large BCS Goldberg position. Seven and six. Nowhere to go that time at all for Mike Davis, as it was Xavier Brewer and Grady Jarrett pursuing there. Really good job. This quarter's coming down to a day, but Brewer read that thing fast, and he forced hard. Sets up this third and long again, Tess. And setting up a good finish here in Death Valley. 20 to 17. Game cocks up. coach in South Carolina football history. Glad you're with us here on this showdown Saturday night game in Death Valley between these two rivals. Joe Tessitore alongside Matt Millen and Shannon Spake is down on the field. 20 to 17. South Carolina up on Clemson. Number 12 up a field goal on number 11. Heated rivalry. So much on the line. Down and nine, the game cops are facing here to open up this fourth quarter. Dylan Thompson back up the starters and has played well. Blitz right up the middle, and that is incomplete, and a flag comes in. Boy, he dialed up another blitz, and that looked like good coverage to me. Remember, it was a pass interference on a fourth and 11 that kept this drive alive. That's Jonathan Meeks coming in to play the ball against Bruce Ellington. And 
Dabble Swayze letting that official know exactly what he thought about that call. Cleaning up a little to three. As you can imagine the crowd not pleased after that pass interference. Dabo Sweeney shaking his head as Dylan Thompson have his team lined up with a first down at the 15-yard line. Mike Davis had and he slipped as he tried to cut. Let's go back to that ball moments ago with Meeks trying to play that ball. Yeah, now watch. He's got a right to the ball. Now the defender is going to the ball. The offensive player going to the ball as well. That, to me, that's a bad call. If you only watch the last two seconds of that, you'd swear Meeks was the offensive player. Exactly right. And that Ellington was a defensive player. A golden opportunity for South Carolina now. 13 play drive. That continues. Second and 10. Thompson. Pressure off the edge, and they find him. That was Xavier Brewer. start of the game we said they don't really have a pass rusher they need to generate one with scheme that's Brent Venables the defensive coordinator generating a pass rusher watch him right here he's sneaking around now in this you've got to be able to account for that and it was but Brewer did a great job of making a miss and then getting the sack sets up this big third down third and 18 Kenny Miles has come back into the game Launch it to the end zone. And this time it is intercepted. And it's Brewer. What a play by Clemson Xavier Brewer. Third time to charm test. The first two opportunities he had, he didn't pull it down. But this one, really well done in the back of the end zone. in the back here it's communication right across to the corner he has to stay deep and Brewer does just that does not allow you can see the communication he stays as deep as the deepest and now he knows exactly where he's at in that end zone and comes down with a great interception it doesn't matter what the uh, explanation is on the back end it's still a pick back on offense trailing by three Boy taken down at the 26. Reese, we got a good one here. That you do. We got a blowout on ESPN2, but it is the last chance to see Johnny Manziel. Old Scooby football thrown for more than 300 on the night. Just run for 66, but scampers in there. 52-16. He's still in the game, and why not? It's AM's last game, the last chance to pad up that Heisman resume. He's going to learn a lesson on that one. But did he ever lay out Ellington? That was a great hit. Watch Swearinger come up and meet Ellington. That's just his shoulder. at midfield because of it. And Roderick McDowell is in the backfield now. Boy, not a slant, but he cannot connect with Nuke Hopkins. Since early in this, since the first quarter, we haven't really heard much from Hopkins or Watkins. 
Sammy Watkins is a guy who's just been really quiet here, and Hopkins has the big play abilities as well, but this offense, they really haven't had the ball very much. In that third quarter, it was really tilted towards South Carolina. They've got to string something together here to give their defense a break. That's Watkins in motion. Himself. Just about two and a half yards that time for Taj Boyd as he was met by Shaq Wilson. Aerial coverage being provided by MetLife. See how MetLife can provide the coverage. You need MetLife. I can do this. 20 to 17 South Carolina lead. We're looking to extend that lead. Xavier Brewer came up with the interception. Giving his offense a chance. Time out. South Carolina. But they will the be facing a third and seven. As we will take a break, South Carolina called a timeout. DJ Swearinger was laying some wood. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. Feel the Hamptonality. And in part by the all-new Ford Fusion. Go further. High intensity between South Carolina and Clemson as we are in the fourth quarter. 12-04 remaining in the game. 20-17 South Carolina lead. Haven't had a four-game win streak in this series since the 50s. That ball is intercepted. Bryson Williams with the pickoff. On a third long. Flag comes in. Bryson Williams should go and, and thank Jadavian Clowney because Clowney's pressure forced that throw. They moved He's Clowney around. Changer. Yeah, they moved him around. They had him standing up in the inside. Number 57 on the defense. 54 correction. 54 on the defense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So first down for South Carolina as they will mark that off on the return. It will be at the 35 yard line. But these teams trading interceptions here. Yeah, here's Clowney right here. He's got to come up inside and get the pressure. And then this safety. Oh, sorry. This safety right here. He's going to come down right inside. And he's doing what they call robbing. And all his job is is to come down and sit in the middle of that zone and read the quarterback's eyes. That's his only job. And because of the pressure, the read was easy, and he made the pick. Shaving County came charging in on Taj Boyd. May have got him up high after he threw that ball. Ooh, Mike Davis. A true freshman with a good run. To the 40-yard line. Let's go back. I want to take a look at Clowney at the end of this play, man. Here comes Clowney up at the top. Oh, oh. Yeah, he did get helmet to helmet. Got away with one there, didn't he? Yes, he did. He's a game changer with the pressure. He can get on opposing quarterbacks. Three sacks tonight. Interception by Williams. And out to the Big run by Davis. South Carolina is right back in position. Thompson threw an interception in the end zone last time he was out there. And here he goes, diving ahead for a nine-yard run to the 30-yard line. What a night for Dylan Thompson. Dylan Thompson. in place of Connor Shaw. Made one mistake. And that was, and that was in the, the, the pit. Had a couple of throws that weren't the best throws. He actually could have had two other picks, but he still has thrown for almost 300 yards here tonight. 296 to Boyd's 174 in the quarterback comparison. And Boyd's the guy that came in as the red hot Heisman candidate, coming off an eight touchdown game last week, setting school and conference records. They will move the chains as Davis gets it to the 27 yard line. Mike Davis is a young man who's been getting plenty of playing time after Kenny Miles went out reaching for his knee. They think he could be the future of the program. Of course, Marcus Lattimore was All-American candidate and once again out 
out for the season after knee surgery. Thompson, wide receiver screen, Jones. And Jones is forced out at the 22 by Gary Peters. You know, what, there's a lot that goes into this game, the least of which, Tess, is the recruiting aspect of it. Because I believe, like a lot of places believe, you've got to win your state. And South Carolina, the last four seasons, has done just that. Marcus Lattimore, Clowney, they've gotten the Mr. Football, and they've done it four successive years, and a win in this game doesn't hurt. Davis and it'll make for a third and two. The clock counts down in this game, nine and a half minutes to play. And that Clemson defense on the field for a bunch here in this second half. And right here is a big time. This is a the time they have to make a play. Somebody's got to find a way. Let's see if Brent Venables doesn't dial up another blitz. He's been rolling the dice a lot here tonight. Was very aggressive was the Clemson defensive coordinator. Possession. Third down and three. Play clock down to three. And now they're going to have to burn a timeout. It'll leave them with one. Timeout. South Carolina. Third and short when we return. here in this fourth quarter and now Dylan Thompson facing a third and three. There's the freshman Davis and he has stepped up and then had a second effort surge there. But it looks like that mark will be just short. Officials are going to take time to get a measurement. That second effort by Davis after being initially met by that Clemson defensive front. So it'll be fourth down. So let's see what the old ball, ball coach wants to do here. See if he doesn't uh, fake it and let Dylan Thompson take it for a run. That six foot three frame forward. And that mark looks like it's right on it. Thompson feels good about it. You can see that yellow line, that's unofficial. I'll bring out the chains again. Thousand plus disappointed. The defense came close to making that stop. Steve Spurrier going for it on fourth down. Now under eight and a half minutes to play. They're trying to win four straight. This heated rivalry. Spurrier trying to become the all-time winning his coach in South Carolina football history. Now it's time for Ace Sanders. Ace Sanders and Mike Davis. Mike Davis has done a really nice job in this series. But Ace Sanders is the playmaker. 
They set Brewer on a corner blitz. They throw to the opposite direction. And that time, Nick Jones was met just inside the 15-yard line by Gary Peters and Travis Blanks. Hands folded, patiently waiting to see if their offense will have another chance. Dabo Sweeney watching that clock tick down. Failing the rivals by three. There's a flag. Just that flag was thrown in very late there. Dead ball. Substitution infraction on the offense. Huh. Five yards for the Still second down. And that's why. And a major second and down. Ball of the 19. on the sideline. John Thompson's over 300 yards passing on the night. It's away from the pressure. Flag is down as Thompson crosses the goal line. But we will wait to see if this is a holding. That's coming back. Hold on. T.J. Johnson, their center, one of the veteran guys. He started a school record 51 straight games. That's tied for the most of any Division One player. That's not so much a hold as much as it is a nice, just a hug. <laughs> it's a nice hug. You hug like that, you're going to get called. Sudden, this drive is going in the other direction. Not what they're used to with South Carolina and the penalties. Play clock down to eight. As Thompson is still delivering the message, they only have one timeout remaining. Play clock down to one. It's another five yards. I'm out. South Carolina. It's their third and final time out of the half. It's a real 30 second timeout. Poor communication, Joe. That's that's the third time in a row that they've done that. And with that timeout, a chance for us to get the Affleck. trivia question. That's a good one. Man. The only South Carolina or Clemson player to score a touchdown in a Super Bowl. Think about it. Had some good players through the years that have come through these two schools. Playing Super Bowls. We'll give you a hint. Chicago Bears. Super Bowl 20. And not a running back. And not a receiver. But a defensive lineman. Playing in the backfield. The fridge. William Refrigerator Perry. In that Super Bowl against the Patriots. Remember that moment. He was the talk about. Yeah, I remember there were a lot of Bear fans. While they were happy that the fridge scored, they were unhappy that Walter Payton didn't get his chance to score. Of course, the fridge played here at Clemson. He's a tremendous defensive lineman. Had all that success back in the early 80s. Second and 22. He can throw this. Ace Sanders, that was a lateral. Now he's going to choose to run it. And Sanders coming to the near side was met that time by Richard Hall. Well, he is an exciting player in the open field. Now, he does have a touchdown pass thrown on the year, so he can do it every which way. Now, you're right, Tessie. It's backwards, so he can throw. He's an eligible uh, thrower, I guess you want to call it.
And South Carolina will have first and goal. A 20-yard run on third and 19 by the backup quarterback. And again, they rolled the dice and came with a blitz. They brought pressure, and he saw it right away. Thompson saw it and went right up the middle and picked up 20 yards. Jonathan Meeks coming up to meet him at the end there, slapping at that ball rather than trying to force him short of the line to make. Connor Shaw looks on. A veteran starter who couldn't play tonight with a foot injury. Oh, that's a nice hit. Mike Davis stopped by Jonathan Willard, who's had a big night. Five and a half minutes to play, and it'll be second and goal for the Gamecocks. Willard has played himself a fantastic game here tonight. I love his aggressiveness. He sees things, and he does not hesitate. He comes downhill, and he's been doing it all night long. Sports Center's coming up next. After it's an exciting one here at Clemson. Second and goal, Thompson looking, and now he's going to tuck it. And he only gets about a yard that time as Spencer Shuey was able to find him. That was good by Shuey. Shuey forced start running up and started chasing him down. They got cut and then got back up and made the tackle. So it's no sin to get blocked. It is a sin to stay blocked. He did a great job. This Thompson kid's pretty good. Sees the whole field test. Not afraid to use his feet to buy some time. And once he sees the receiver, the ball is out quickly. Venable's defensive coordinator. Well, he rolled the dice a few times in his fourth quarter. Finally, South Carolina broke through. Second touchdown of the night for Bruce Ellington. Sixth on the year for him. Couldn't have come at a better time. Steve Spurrier trying to close in on history. Looking for four straight in this rivalry. This guy will have one of them, Judavion Clowney, a generic finalist for the best defensive player tonight. Boy, he's been the best of the best out there defensively. Three sacks, 11 and a half now on the season. That's a school record for South Carolina. Records going to keep on flowing. If this ends up a win, they're looking for four straight against the rivals. First time they've done that since 1954. Coverage of Monday Night Football will start with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's at 6.30. Then at 8.30, the Panthers and the Eagles. Cam Newton in action on Monday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Cam Newton's old team, Auburn, made it official today going winless in SEC play as Alabama throttled them and now sets up that SEC title game. Game day will be there next Saturday in Atlanta. And add to that total. Huge Davion Clowney, his fourth sack of the night. You can see him down here in the bottom of your screen. It's just, it's just a speed. Just ran right past him. By the way, going up against Brandon Thomas, who was named the ACC Lineman of the Week at one point this year. 
I mean, he just blew past him and went Superman on Taj Boyd. Twelve and a half sacks on the year. Boyd now. Just scrambling for a couple of yards. And keep in mind, Clowney has been dealing with injuries this year. Didn't play last week. Being bothered by leg and foot injuries. Was limited in practice this week. But he is a top tier talent. I'm surprised. Cle now, everybody in the country knows what Clowney is. I'm surprised Clemson hasn't tried to chip him or keep a tight end into that side. They've done nothing. And that is off the hands of DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins only has that one catch. It was a great one, the 43 yard touchdown, but he has to be more productive. For Clemson to have a shot. Wow. Look, comparatively, tonight versus the rest of the season, they've been abysmal. You can look at the numbers speak for themselves, but Taj Boyd's made a couple of throws, so that one in particular, that's a great throw. You gotta make that catch. So Benson back on the punt. And A. Sanders calls for the fair catch. At the 37. It's the ACC Big Ten Challenge, 14th annual ACC Big Ten Challenge. Starts Tuesday and Wednesday nights on ESPN. So many good games among them. Two games on Tuesday. Number 16, NC State, number four, Michigan. And how about North Carolina and Indiana then? On Wednesday, Michigan State, Miami, and number three, Ohio State against number five, Duke. ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. You can also see it on the Watch ESPN app. Duke is up on Louisville right now. Coach K get the Blue Devils going early this season. Yes, Tom Izzo should have been a football coach. Yeah, he loves the game. Huge fan. So a 10-point cushion now. Under three minutes to play for South Carolina. Hand off to Mike Davis. Gain of one yard on the play. Timeout. Clemson. Still first timeout in the second half. So Clemson. Clemson. Second timeout. We'll use a timeout. We just didn't see enough of Boyd's weapons tonight. Well, we didn't see enough of Boyd's weapons tonight because the South Carolina offensive line took the game over and provided Thompson lots of time to throw, and he was able to find all of his guys that he needed, in particular, a Sanders. Long history of this rivalry. South Carolina, take you back to 04, just to give you a glimpse of how heated this thing has been. The brawl, the fourth quarter, the game delayed by 10 minutes. The Bulls' his final game, those Bulls, for the postseason, and then a year later, shaking hands in midfield before the game. Steve Spurrier came into this rivalry, realized what it was all about, but also realized that, guys, it's not just about beat Clemson. It's about making every game the most important game, and they've had such sustained success. And a win here tonight, and Spurrier becomes the winningest coach that South Carolina football has ever had. Currently tied with Rex Enright at 64 wins. left the game earlier in the second half. Davis, a true freshman, a little slow to get up here, but a guy who they're very high on for his future. Of course, everybody wants to know the future of Marcus Lattimore. Has successful surgery on his knee. Jim Andrews from Birmingham performed that in early November. Everybody says he's on schedule to return to South Carolina and be productive again. Everybody's rooting for Marcus Lattimore. Last year, of course, tore an ACL against Mississippi State, had knee surgery. As the SEC's leading rusher when he was injured a year ago. And Miles comes in now. It's the midfield. Shannon? Yeah, Joe, I spoke with the uh, South Carolina trainer about Marcus Lattimore. He told me, as you just mentioned, he is on schedule. 
He expects to be back between 12 and 18 months. Right now, he's not putting any weight on that leg. Starting next week, he will be doing that, but he's going through three to three and a half hours of uh, therapy every single day and really working hard. I'm hearing his spirits are very, very high, and he is certainly at home watching this game. Liking what he sees, Shannon. Devo Sweeney is quite outspoken with heartfelt words after Lattimore was injured. Sweeney said that his prayers go out to Lattimore and his family. He's been heavy hearted for him, a winner in every regard. He said, hopefully, we haven't seen the last of him, that he represents all the good things that college football should be about. And that was a comment that, of course, in this rivalry, in the way Spurrier is, uh, got a lot of attention. The way Spurrier responded to that quote from Dabo Sweeney. But both these coaches coming in here tonight, shaking hands pregame and saying, hey, this isn't about us and the way sometimes we go back and forth and make headlines. It's about the players and what they've done on the field this year. And the player who really stepped up tonight, Des, Dylan Thompson, he said at the start of the game, he had to get the ball into the hands of the guys who could make plays for him. And he did that all night long. And then as the game went on, Himself using his feet, this big one on third 19 for 20 yards really sets up this touchdown throw, which again he used his feet to Ellington in the back of the end zone. Oh, Thompson just had a phenomenal game here tonight 310 yards, three touchdowns, big time night. Both times when they've needed him this year, Connor Shaw's injuries, he has played exceptionally. Well, started in week two against East Carolina. Went for 330 and three touchdowns there, too. Now Ellington. As the clock runs down here, Sports Center will be coming up after our game here. Clemson uses a timeout. Notre Dame and USC, of course, getting everybody's attention. They'll talk about the Heisman race. Many were putting Taj Boyd on their ballot this past week after his performance against NC State, but falling flat tonight as Johnny Menzel continues his outstanding season. Sports Center will have all the coverage of what has been such an entertaining day, a showdown Saturday in college football. What will these standings look like tomorrow night? We wait to see what happens with Notre Dame and USC. Alabama and Georgia will have their say down at Atlanta, and game day will be there for the SEC championship. The BCS standings brought to you by Allstate. A lot of good coaching jobs out there this year. Bill Snyder there at number six. And David Shaw had himself a heck of a year. And I just want to say to Bill O'Brien, who got his eighth win today against a tough Wisconsin team, that he just had a phenomenal year. Congratulations on eight wins, Tess. A lot of people didn't think they'd even win one. He turned that program around fast. I know somebody standing next to me that actually predicted Penn State would win eight this year. Not a lot of believers in that one. Outstanding coaching job by <laughs> Bill O'Brien. And it's been an outstanding run of solid program building by Steve Spurrier. As Thompson starts celebrating and Clemson looks on. They came in so hungry for this one. And now it'll be South Carolina taking four straight in this series. 1951 through 1954, the only other time that South Carolina has done that. They've been this game since way back when. They started in 1896 and they played every year since 1909. The left game, offense, five yards from the previous spot, still fourth down. Both these programs have good young players. Clemson with the young Taj Boyd, Dylan Thompson as well. There's going to be a lot of wins in both these programs' futures.
There's another young one right there. Yeah, there's a guy that's going to be one of the prized possessions of an NFL draft down the road. Flag here on this punt with 23 seconds remaining. Davian Clowney is something special. Well, we talked about him at the start of the season. He's the guy now seemingly blocked there, doesn't give up on the play, sack number one. Then they come with numbers, provides pressure from the outside. They came from the inside, another sack. He bit fully test. He was blocked, got off a box. They brought pressure from different spots. He was able to make plays. And when they needed him just to one on one beat a guy off the edge, he's been able to do that tonight. Four sacks, real solid, outstanding game by Jadavion Clowney. Just a sophomore, former he, number one recruit in the country, and then the SEC freshman of the year, and now an All American, and we discussed it possibly down there at the College Football Award Show with the Big Eric as the best defensive player. We'll see who gets that. But. 12 and a half sacks on the season for Jadavion Clowney. He's got room to improve. I mean, he'll... Scary thought, Matt. Yeah, he, he can get big. He can get stronger. He's only 265 or so. He get a little bigger, get some strength in his upper body. You know who also is playing a little bit of defense here? Steve Spurrier. <laughs> when you see a coach, as Taj Boyd brings it up towards midfield, when you see a coach like that turning towards the players, towards the sideline, trying to avoid a little Gatorade splash yeah, because not. Steve Spurrier is about to become the winningest coach in South Carolina history. He's a 65. He's, a he's, got his his back to, he's got his back to the field <laughs> and he's more worried about his players as Jadavian Clowney finishes off his night tracking down Taj Boyd at his five sets. Sports Center's coming up next. Our final score, 27-17. And we have a good one over on ABC right now, Notre Dame and USC. But let's get you to Sports Center on a big night for Steve Spurrier.